Welcome to Kimmer's Gaming. Today we are going to discuss one of the not so good games of Atari 2600, Donkey Kong. In the time when arcade game didn't have to make much sense, we gamers had a liking for Donkey Kong. A true gamer would not forget the nervousness of not knowing whether the barrel will fall on them or will pass mystically on the overhead. Sometimes I still do wonder, why in the world would an ape take Mario's girlfriend and climb to the top of the building? And who left those barrels by the way? Being a kid when I first discovered it, it was hard for me to believe that Colgo made games for Atari 2600 when they had their own gaming console at that time, that is the Colco Vision. And apparently Donkey Kong looked much better in it. Around that time they were the only two companies that made games for three different consoles. Whatever might be the reason I was pretty happy to bring Donkey Kong in my room. It did came to my notice that there was a different definition of blockiness in Donkey Kong. Some games of that era were more blocky than others but Donkey Kong here had some pretty big blocks. The fireballs seemed as goldfish crackers and Donkey Kong was more of an anthropomorphic turd. It is what we say being criminally negligent. Colco who handled this port didn't had any incentive to make it good. It was already making a better version of Donkey Kong port for its much advanced gaming console Colco Vision. They did what? Electronic Arts did to Joe Montana Football on Sega about 10 years later. If gamers remember playing this port on Atari 2600, they must be at least in their 30s. Pac-Man and DT did kill the console gaming in its first run but Donkey Kong on Atari 2600, released in 1982, ended the machine's relevance entirely. True gamers would not remember playing anything on it since then. Donkey Kong on Atari 2600 was a pain to look at. The biggest problem in this port of the game was that the arcade game was played on a screen turned 90 degrees. The aspect ratio was way off. As in it was 3 by 4 instead of 4 by 3. This was the reason why the superior port of Coco Vision left off one layer of the first board. This resulted in players running from left to right in reaching the last ladder. The gameplay is quite good however. It is pretty responsive and this made it quite flexible to play despite the lackluster graphics. The controls of the arcade were very similar to the controls given in Atari 2600 gaming console. Also, the game options were non-existent as the game started with a fire button without any interaction. When we look at the difficulty switch setting and game variations for Donkey Kong, we see that the difficulty switches are not used and the game variation was depending on whether or not the power was on or off. What I mean to say is, you have one skill level and one player. On top of that there are only two different screens. Unlike the four screens which is in the arcade, most of the home console versions only had three out of the four screens anyways. So try not to feel too bad about it. Presence of familiar hammer is there, which allows Mario to eat up points while smashing barrels. Player has to get Mario to the top and rescue the princess before the counter goes to zero. The second screen was the rivet screen in which Mario has to pass over rivets, hence removing them. Mario has to hop over fireballs while he removes all the eight rivets. From here on out, the game switches between two screens, gradually getting harder as he continues his brave rescues. Each screen gives the player 5000 points. Limited to only 3 lives, it gets challenging as as the game gets harder. Gamers could get more points by smashing or jumping over barrels and fireballs and removing rivets. However, what a player can't get is the lives. This game did brought the excitement of arcade to homes. Later technology made much better releases and subsequently a platformer was born. So what is my final verdict on this game? Well, Colco Donkey Kong only offered a gist of the original arcade version. In any case, most home versions suffered more than which was necessary especially with the two screens. But overall the game itself was fun. Its later releases had improved graphics and more levels. 
That is all for today. Have a nice day.